Hi, I'm Phil from AttackForge, and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how you can, with just a few clicks of a button, have your reports converted to PDF, encrypted, and emailed to your customers. This is great if you want to introduce full reporting automation and delivery within your own AttackForge. Let's start by checking which pen tests are ready to have their reports sent to customers. So here we can see for this pen test Acme Core portal, the current sub status of the project is showing that the report's ready for release. So let's go ahead and email it to all of the customers. To do that, we're gonna click on settings. So from the project settings, we're now gonna to come to the sub status and transition this project into reporting final. Now, when we click into that, we have a question, do we want to email the reports? In this case, we want to, so we're going to select yes. Next, it's asking us to include the reporting templates that we want to include and send to the customers. In this case, let's send them a pen test report. Now we have options to select who should receive this report. In this case, we want the clients or customers on the project to receive it. So let's go ahead and tick those. We can, in addition, email to additional users within the system, or separately, we can send it to other groups. And lastly, we can enter in additional recipients if we would need to have the report delivered to people outside of the system. So now we're gonna click on update to save the settings and that's gonna kick the automation off. So if we switch to Gmail, and within a few short moments, we'll see our new pen test report. So now we've just received the pen test report. Let's take a look at it. So we're gonna click on the email and see we have some information about the project that the report belongs to, as well as a password to decrypt the report. Let's download the report. Let's open it up and take a look. We're going to enter in the decryption key. And here we can see we have our pen test report in PDF format. So now let's take a look behind the scenes to see how this automation works. So here we have an example of the workflow we just saw. In step one, within the AttackForge application, that's when we went through and marked the report as final and selected who should receive the report. Now behind the scenes, that sends an event indicating to the event handler that the report is now ready to be sent to the customers. And at that point, it retrieves the data for the project as well as the reporting templates. In step three, we use a report gen CLI tool or the equivalent library package to generate a docx report using the data and the template retrieved in step two. In step four, we use a preferred docx to PDF conversion tool to generate the PDF report. In step five, we encrypt the PDF report. And in step six, we email the encrypted PDF report to all of the recipients. Now let's take a look at each step in more detail. Starting with step one, let's take a look at how we can configure the AttackForge application to include all of the fields and logic we need in order to initiate this automation. From within the administration module, click on projects and then come to the custom field section. From here, create a custom field that's gonna represent the sub status for the project. Here we can see that we have the important ones that we're gonna use for this automation, including the report ready for release and the transition to final, which kicks off the automation process. Next, we're gonna create another custom field called email reports. And this is gonna be a required field, which tells AttackForge whether or not to email the reports when the project enters this phase. We're using height expressions to only show this field when the relevant substatus is met. After that, we're gonna create another custom field called report templates. Now this field is going to be used to indicate which types of reports should be sent to the customers. In this case, we can include any type of template that you have available 
within your attack forge. We're also going to use hide expressions to ensure that this field is only visible when someone chooses to email the reports to the customers. And lastly, we're going to create some additional fields which are going to be used to indicate who should receive the reports. The first one is a selection of different project roles on the team. So in this example, we've included clients or pen testers, or we might want to send it to the QA lead for their review. We can also include individual users within the system. So that here we have an option to select additional people who might want to receive the report outside of the project team. We can do a similar field for groups as well, if we'd like to email the project report to certain groups. And if we want additional recipients, we can use a list type field. So that way we can enter in multiple recipients who are going to receive the report if they don't already exist in the system. Now you don't have to use these custom fields. You can create whatever workflow that you desire. For example, here when it comes to who can email the reports, you can use the custom field access control to enforce a workflow that only certain users are allowed to perform. In this case, only administrators, project coordinators, or a certain group we've included team A are allowed to send reports to customers via email. So now let's take a look at step two to see how those custom fields kick off the automation process in the backend. Using the Attack Forge event-driven API, you can set up a receiver to receive the event when a project gets updated. That's gonna be used to get all of that information needed to know when to email and who to email the reports to. When setting up your receiver, you can use the ones that's provided by AttackForge or you can create your own. We provide them in Node.js, Python, .NET, Java, and Go to make it easier for engineers. These receivers are also available on our GitHub. Once you've set up your receiver, you want to subscribe to the project updated event. This event is going to contain all of the information you need to implement to know exactly when to send the report and who to send it to. In particular, you're going to be looking at the project custom fields as that's where all the logic is going to belong. And to retrieve the data for the project that you're going to use in your report, you can use the REST API, in particular the get project report endpoint. Now let's take a look to see how we can generate the docx report. From npm, you can search for attackforge and you'll see that there's two packages that are supported. One is the report gen command line interface tool and that provides a way to generate reports on the command line using a template and that JSON data that we downloaded from the REST API. The other option is to use the report gen node library package. So this allows you to generate reports with inside your code. Using either of these libraries will allow you to generate a docx report. Now let's take a look to see how we can convert that docx report into a PDF report. Now there's many different ways to convert a docx to a PDF programmatically. Doing a simple Google search you'll find that there's dozens of options available. Some are easier than others, however, do rely on third-party APIs. Because we are producing pen test reports and other sensitive reports, you do want to ensure you've fully vetted the service you're going to use or the conversion method. For the example in this video, I use convertapi.com. However, there's also Adobe's own REST APIs that you can also use. And if you prefer something local, you can use LibreOffice in headless mode. Let's take a look at how we can encrypt the PDF report. Your docx to PDF conversion library or tool might already support encryption. However, if it doesn't, you can always encrypt the PDF report separately using another utility. In the example in this video, I used QPDF. You can easily install this utility through Debian's Advanced Package Tool, or APT. 
So let's take a look at now how we can email the encrypted PDF report to all the recipients. To send an email, you're going to require two things. The first one is a library that's going to help you to construct an email and append the report as an attachment. In the example in this video, I use known mailer. Now once you have your email constructed, you're going to need to send it through an SMTP service. In this video, I used sendgrid.com. However, like with the docx to PDF conversion, you may want to vet the external third parties you use to send the reports through. Or you can always use your own existing SMTP service. Now putting all of those steps together, let's take another look at the process and see what's happening behind the scenes. So from the project, again, we'll move it into the final report status. And here we'll make our selection of who we're going to email. Once we save that, we'll see that the receiver has already picked up the information and is now building the docx report. Now it's going ahead and converting that into a PDF report. Once this process is finished, it's now going to be encrypting the report and now it's already emailed it. And now we can see the emails just being delivered. And if we open that up, we'll see we have our PDF report. So in summary, AttackForge makes pen test report automation not only possible, but easy. You can create your own custom workflows to match your needs using a combination of custom fields, access controls, and height expressions. If you're already using AttackForge, try giving it a go. If you're not yet using AttackForge, well, what the bloody hell are you waiting for? Thanks for watching.